Welcome everyone to this week's edition of Feedback LearnX, Narcissism. Remember to stay tuned to this topic and many more that we prepare for you. Like and subscribe to our channel. Without being a philosopher or a scientist, as the term is commonly understood, Sigmund Freud has had a decisive influence on the conception that human beings have about themselves. His proposals were fundamental in the 20th century and continue to be so today. He himself was aware of its reach. In one of his 1917 writings, A Difficulty of Psychoanalysis, he mentions that universal narcissism, that is, humanity's self-esteem, has received three serious insults from scientific research. The first, called cosmological, was carried out by Nicholas Copernicus in the 16th century. The sensory perception that the earth does not move and the conviction that it was the center of the universe were a guarantee of the dominant role of man over the world, which turned out to be a narcissistic illusion. The second affront was carried out by Carlos Darwin in the 19th century. Man distanced himself from animals, saying that they lack reason and emphasizing that our soul is immortal and of divine origin. This arrogance was overthrown by the studies of this scientist. Man is part of the animal kingdom, a relative of some species, and his body shows similarity to that world from which he tried to get away. This second confrontation, called biological, reminded man that he is much closer to the animal world than he admits. The third affront to the narcissism of humanity was headed by Sigmund Freud himself and designates it as psychological. Man has believed for centuries that his psychic life is only conscious, that is, that the ego of each individual knows fully through consciousness everything that happens in his mental life, thoughts, emotions, feelings, etc., and decides what to do using your will. But in reality, the psychic life of man is much more complex. For example, an individual feels anguish and anger when his office is disordered. He knows that disorder causes him anguish and anger, but he does not know why. Another individual may be very afraid of insects, but does not know the causes of such behavior. The founder of psychoanalysis says that the self cannot understand why it feels paralyzed in such a strange way. Psychoanalysis is dedicated to investigating this type of attitudes and their origin reaching the conclusion that a large part of mental life is not under the control of the self and the rule of its will. Man has overestimated the power he has over himself and his psychic life. In other words, the self is not a master in its own home. Indeed, the mental life of man is not only made up of the self and consciousness, but there is an unconscious psychic instance of whose contents the individual knows nothing. Therefore, this claim of man turns out to be a mere illusion. Thus, the human being received three blows to his narcissism in the last five centuries. He is not the center of the universe. He is not radically different from the animals and he is not the complete owner of his psychic life and his decisions. This has stripped it of the privileged place that it was built. He has deconstructed himself. But in addition to addressing this universal narcissism or self-love of humanity, Sigmund Freud raised the existence of a narcissism in each individual. In 1914, he published Introduction to Narcissism, a very important piece for various reasons. In it, he affirms that in every human being, there is a primary narcissism present in the first years of life. If you look closely at babies or young children, it is found that to a large extent, they are only interested in having adults satisfy their biological needs or their demands for love, care, and protection. They believe that the world revolves around them and adults often corroborate this. It is enough to see the members of a family, how they treat a baby. They hug the baby, they lull the baby, they say affectionate words, 
a sign is positive on the car that says baby on board. Freud uses an expression that synthesizes this world that revolves around the infant, your majesty the baby. This primal narcissism never completely goes away. Rather, it is the self-love or feeling of self-worth that every individual processes to some extent. It is what many years later in the decade of the 80s of the last century was called self-esteem. In fact, Freud used the term self-esteem only once in this writing on narcissism. Now, as the infant grows and interacts with his mother and other people around him, that love that at first was only for himself now is placed also in the people with whom he or she interacts or is linked with and in the activities they are performing. Love arises towards their mother, their father, their siblings, their grandparents, and so on. This step is fundamental in the development of the psyche of every individual. Sigmund Freud called it object love. The loving bonds of early childhood, particularly with parents, are very important as they form the foundation on which they will develop with others. An extreme example occurs in falling in love. The loved one occupies the lover's thoughts and time almost completely. It seems that he forgets himself because of the other, while everything else takes a back seat. Fortunately, such a state is temporary. This allows you to get to know the other person in a more realistic way. However, not everything is there. There are situations in which the individual withdraws, withdrawing into himself and having no great interest in coming into contact with the outside world. This happens, for example, when someone gets sick. They don't feel like going out. They want to stay home. They seek care. It also occurs when a love loss is experienced or when a loved one dies. Closeness to people and activities that gave satisfaction ceased to matter. The world becomes gloomy. But after this narcissistic withdrawal, in general, the individual returns to his or her daily life and reestablishes their connection with the world and with people. That's it for this week's edition of Feedback Learnex. We hope you enjoyed this topic of narcissism. Stay tuned next week, Thursday night at 9.15 p.m.